Please evacuate the building. <laughs> Did you do that, Shane? Yes, I did. <laughs> Just for you, Bob. <laughs> Just for you. I think it's 6.30, Jim, isn't it? <coughs> now it is. It is. I'd like to call this meeting to order. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Burlington City Council meeting number two, January 16th, 2012, at 6.30 in the Thomas J. Smith Council Chambers. Uh, before we start, I'd like to... Uh, say that we're experimenting with the sound system. So when you come up to speak, you don't have to lean into that microphone. I think you should be able just to stand there like a normal person and uh, see how it goes, okay? We're gonna try that too. Uh, we're ready for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <laughs> Roll call, please, Kathleen. Reed? Here. Anderson? Here. Davidson? Here. Fleming? Here. McCampbell? Here. The first item on our agenda, as is usual, is a consent agenda. All matters listed under item one, consent agenda, having been discussed or considered to be routine by the City Council. It will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items. If discussion desired, then that item will be removed from the consent agenda. will be considered separately. On the consent agenda tonight, we have the usual finances and miscellaneous, uh, <clears throat> beer, liquor, wine, cigarette licenses, reports, and bonds. We have a resolution approving uh, final acceptance of release of retention monies for the 2011 hot mix, mix asphalt resurfacing project. And we're setting the date uh, for public hearings on February 6th for the vacation of an alley uh, from Division to Elm and to sell the property at 316 Summer Street. Those are public hearings on February 6th. Is there anyone from the audience who'd like to have any of these items removed from the consent agenda? Seeing none, Council, do you have any? Nope. No. None. No. Okay, I'll entertain a motion. Uh, motion to approve all listed under item one consent agenda. Second. second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Kathleen? Reed? Aye. Anderson? Aye. Davidson? Aye. Fleming? Aye. McCampbell? Aye. And the motion is carried. Our next, we have a presentation from Mr. Harlan Yoder, who is the first district commander of the American Legion uh, concerning veterans services. So, Mr. Yoder, the podium is yours. Thank you, Mayor Davidson and the council for allowing me to address you tonight. My name is Harlan Yoder, and I am the commander of the American Legion First District. There are nine districts of the Department of Iowa in the American Legion, and the first district is comprised of the southeast 11 counties. Uh, the Burlington Post commander was supposed to have been with me, but he had to take his wife to Cedar Rapids, which uh, was a five o'clock departure this morning and since he's about 80 I think he's pretty well done in so he won't be with me tonight. So. 80's not so old. Well, <laughs> I'll let you know when I get there. <laughs> I can tell you about it. <laughs> First of all are there any veterans on the City Council? Yep. Are you a legionnaire or do you belong no. to? I'm just a veteran. No, no veterans organization. Air Force. Oh, well, thank you for your service. Thank you. Yes, Bob, thank you. Purpose of my visit tonight is to inform you of the proposed revitalization for Local Post 52. The American Legion is a mutual aid organization of veterans of the United States Armed Forces, chartered by the United States Congress. It was founded to benefit those veterans who served during a wartime period as defined by Congress. The American Legion was founded in 1919 by veterans returning from Europe and World War I and later chartered under Title 36 of the United States Code. The organization based on four pillars of service. First is Veterans Affairs and Rehabilitation. This is to assure access to VA care, secure funding and staffing for the VA system, promote employment and business opportunities, support the GI Bill through which our veterans can further their education, and to pay respects to our fallen comrades with military rights and escorts from the Legion Riders. 
The Legion of Raiders, along with the Patriot Guard, are instrumental in keeping the protesters like the Westboro Baptist Church from interrupting service and causing further emotional distress to the families of our fallen. The second pillar is national security. The American Legion supports strong national defense and homeland security. The Legion has established programs like Operation, Operation Troop Support and Comfort Warriors. The American Legion is instrumental in disaster preparedness as well. American Legion Post in Parkersburg is one of the few buildings left standing after the tornado four years ago and served as the headquarters for the relief effort. The American Legion also maintains support for the full accounting of POW and MIAs from all wars. The third pillar is Americanism. Um, the Legion is a strong supporter of uh, flag protection amendment voter registration and participation, Boy Scouts, Boy State, junior shooting sports, and oratorical competition, amongst other programs. Children and youth is, a fine, is the last pillar, family support network, temporary financial assistance, child welfare foundation. So what does the American Legion do in the community? You may be aware of the American Legion baseball. This is the oldest program of the American Legion. Some of the more Famous participants include Hall of Famers George Brett, Steve Carlton, Harmon Kilbrew, and Ted Williams, amongst others. Boys State started in 1935, and I didn't know until uh, I started doing some research on another project that uh, the Legion is nonpartisan, but they're very political. <laughs> the, the Boys and Girls State camps started uh, in response to uh, socialist youth camps that sprang up during the 30s, so that was mm. kind of news to me. In Iowa, 500 or more boys from across the state and sponsored by, the lo by their local Legion post participate in a week-long camp to learn about our form of government and our political system. Other Legion programs include the High school, high school oratorical contest, junior shooting, <coughs> fifth grade flag essay contest, Eagle Scout of the Year, Law Enforcement Officer of the Year, and Educator of the Year. Approximately six years ago, in response to extended and repeat deployments by our National Guard and Reserves, Operation Troop Support was created. This program gives the troops and families con contact information for whatever help they may need during deployment. This information is given out at yellow ribbon ceremonies prior to deployment, so if any problems arise, they will know where to go for, for help. This may be as simple as a non-starting lawnmower, plumbing and heating problems, up to threatened eviction, which has happened in, in Des Moines. Temporary financial assistance is available where minor children are, are involved. This can help a family where there are unmet needs for food, shelter, medical or utility expenses. Offered Operation Comfort Warriors provides items not normally uh, given by the government, such as books, DVDs, calling cards, and electronic games to our wounded military personnel. The Legacy Scholarship Fund was established uh, for an opportunity for higher education to the children of parents who have been killed while serving our country. To date, $3 million have been raised largely by the American Legion writers. The ultimate goal is a $20 million endowment to sustain this program. Locally, Post 52 participates in the Boys State program by sending campers and volunteers at Camp Dodge during the week while the, the camp is running. The Post also performs military honors for its fallen members and any other veteran in the community who is not a member. Memorial Day services and Veterans Day services are also con conducted by the local Post. There are times when membership in a local post has declined and interest in programs is low to non-existent. A revitalization effort can help energize and breathe life into a post so, so that the post can become viable again. Did you stop to think what an active American Legion post means to a community or how much the veterans and youth are being shortchanged if there isn't one? No service officer to help with claims or hospitalization or death benefits. No high school students at Boy State or participating in other Legion programs. Most importantly, no place for veterans to make themselves heard. So this is why uh, the American Legion is coming to town and with the help of the department and district leadership, we intend to revitalize the local post. 
This is the sixth revitalization effort in Iowa. The intent is for each district to revitalize a post and then help other districts with their program. The local post is a good news, bad news situation um, in that membership and program participation has declined over the last 15 years, which is kind of department-wide and countrywide. It's not uh, just the Legion that's hurting, so are the AMVETS and, and the VFW. Mm -hmm. Um, department's assessment is that the local post needs a little boost, not a total makeover. So uh, that's why we're looking at coming in for a couple of days when three or four is, is normal. This time I'd like to share with you what we propose to do on February 1st and 2nd. Um, we will, um, on the 1st, we'll meet with Commander Foster and selected post members to uh, help with the, the membership for the year. We'll be going door to door talking only no, no, uh, to known veterans, no cold calls. This will be performed by myself, uh, Ken Rockholtz, uh, district commander for the last two years, who is my membership chairman and district vice commander, Bob Kennedy. Uh, the first is also the regular meeting night, so we'll have a meeting with the post membership. And we will be doing the, the morning on the second, we'll be doing the morning radio show on KBR with uh, Mark Morris, uh, department programs director Kathy Nace, past uh, department commander Jerry Sieben, and department officer, service officer Rich Anderson will participate along with myself. And if we have time, we'll continue to work the membership from the previous day. In the evening, there will be an open house at the Memorial Auditorium uh, Thursday evening from 5 to 8. Department personnel will be available to answer questions about programs, claims, or entry into the VA system. Um, I'd like to read a letter. I spoke to the mayor briefly before the, the meeting started. Hawkeye attention, uh, attention letter to the editor on January 16th, your mayor and city council was addressed by the local American Legion Post 52 here in Burlington. The district and local officers that were present are encouraging community support for revitalization efforts so that they can continue to do the great things that we as a patriotic community may have taken for granted. The revitalization will take place on February 1st and 2nd, 2012. While being a member of the local American Legion Post 52 is beneficial to the military veterans in Burlington. It is equally important that we bring to them the support as a community that is proud of their service to our country. We count on them to raise the flag at our home football games, perform honors for their fallen comrades and their families, seek out and give scholarships and awards to our youth through programs such as American Legion, Boy State, and Flag Essay Contest. Most of all, be a solid unified voice on issues that protect this great land. American Legion Post 52 members along with state and district officers will be on hand for an open house on Thursday, February 2nd from 5 to 8 p.m. They will have a state service officer present as well as the Des Moines County Veterans Affairs representative who are prepared to answer any benefit and claim issues our brave veterans may be facing. I would encourage all military veterans to stop in for refreshments and visit with your fellow comrades and maybe even volunteer your services in some small way so they may continue to be the asset that we have come to appreciate in Burlington. And sincerely, Jim Davidson, Burlington Mayor. Um, I guess um, I would like to uh, have an announcement or I, I'll send the, the a poster publicizing the the open house, and I was wondering if we get that on, be any problem to put that on the public access station. I, I don't think that's a problem, is it? Okay. okay. We can do that. Send that yeah. to the clerk then. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you for allowing me the opportunity to speak, and do you have any questions of uh, me? I just want to thank you for your good work. Okay. So thank you for your presentation, thank you. sir. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Sure. Have you signed that, please? Okay, there you go, sir. Thank you. 
Council, you have any questions of Mr. Yoder? I don't. Okay. Thank you, sir. Now we have time for consideration of plans and specifications for 2012 Crystal Drive reconstruction. Mr. City Manager. Right, and we have Ryan Thornburg, the city <coughs> engineer, to speak on that. Thank you. Um, here to discuss the Crystal Drive reconstruction project we have coming up. Um, the project is to for the complete reconstruction of the 1,100 foot of the Crystal Drive subdivision or Crystal Drive cul-de-sac north of Florence Avenue. Um, the new street will be 27 foot wide and it'll be a six inch thick PCC pavement, uh, which is typical of our reconstructions. Um, it'll have a newly um, in place sub base and improved sub grade with sub drains to allow the water to get away from underneath. Um, our intention due to the extended construction period and the length of it is to phase the project in two different phases, one being the reconstruction of the cul-de-sac itself and the second being the reconstruction of the mainline paving. In addition, we plan to offer an incentive to the contractor with a cap of $10,000 for early completion of the construction. Um, the construction schedules roughly plan to be seven weeks. It's been budgeted that $253,000 is available for the project. We estimate that the construction will cost around $249,000. Uh, the plan is to receive bids on February 22nd and for the council to award contract on March 5th with the construction being this spring or summer. Are there any questions from the council? The street's in bad shape and needs to get done. Mm -hmm. We agree. So. Okay. Is there anyone from the audience who has a question or comment concerning this project? Uh, Ryan, could you let Stan come up to the podium now, please? Somebody first? No, you're up, Stan. <clears throat> uh, Stan Stratton, 2809 Shamrock Drive. I was just wondering if the homeowners have to incur any of this cost. Is the city paying for it? This is a city-funded project. Because? Because it, it's a city street and it's our normal. But isn't any street in the city city it, street? It's, our, it's in the five-year plan, right, Steve? Is that what we're doing? Yes. Normally, don't the homeowners have to incur some of this when you want something paved or replaced? No, it's already a paved street. It's just yeah. redoing the street. Okay. Yeah. Just for my information, my street's getting bad, too. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Stan. Anyone else? Steve. <clears throat> I didn't plan on being up here twice tonight, but it's such an exciting agenda, I couldn't resist. Um, I'm really uh, excited. Just and we need a name and Steve Zager, 5764 Flint Crest Drive. Thank you. I think it's. A, I'm glad to see they're redeveloping that uh, prop. I mean uh, that street because it does need repair badly. There's another issue right down the road there for a uh, property owner named John Reinsmith about water. I'd like to take this opportunity to have an op to meet with the city engineer and talk about what we could do about redirecting some of that water. And uh, I don't know the answer to it, but I think it would be a great time to t start talking about things like that. Yeah, so I'd like to pass that agree, so I'm sure they'd be glad to visit with yeah, you. Thank you. Yeah. Anyone else from the audience? Seeing none, uh, we're open. we need a motion then, please. Motion to close. <clears throat> second that. We have a motion to close and second the public hearing. Kathleen? Reed? Aye. Anderson? Aye. Davidson? Aye. Fleming? Aye. Nick Campbell? Aye. <clears throat> the public hearing is closed. Um, we need a motion. Uh, we have a res resolution approving plans and specifications for the 2012 Crystal Drive reconstruction. Second. Okay, do we have any comments, Council? Okay, we have a motion to second. Okay. Are you ready, Kathleen? Yes. Reed? Aye. Anderson? Aye. Fle Davidson? Aye. Fleming? Aye. McCampbell? Aye. The motion is approved. 
Now we have a consideration of the sale of property locally known as 621 North 10th Street, the City of Burlington, Des Moines County. And Eric Tislin is here to talk about that. Okay, Eric. Thank you. Uh, this is one of the properties the city acquired um, through the court system as an abandoned property. Um, and we've had uh, one offer on it um, for our minimum bid to um, purchase the home and redevelop the home, uh, rehab the project. Uh, it is located on uh, North 10th Street on the west side of North 10th between High and Court Street. Um, and uh, it's a home that otherwise probably wouldn't be on our demolition list and um, removed that way. So hopefully that. Uh, individual that um, is looking to purchase the property can rehab it and get it back in the tax rolls and a substantial property again so okay council you have questions Barry? i'm just glad he's doing it <laughs> amen uh, anyone from the audience <coughs> wish to speak on this issue <coughs> seeing none we need a motion to close a uh, motion to close second Okay, Kathleen. Reed? Aye. Anderson? Aye. Davidson? Aye. Fleming? Aye. McCampbell? Aye. The hearing is closed. Now we have a, a motion. Uh, resolution approving sale of property locally known as 621 North 10th Street, City of Burlington, Des Moines County, Iowa. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion, Council? Okay, Kathleen. Reed? Aye. Anderson? Aye. Davidson? Aye. Fleming? Aye. McCampbell? Aye. Okay, he's a homeowner. All right, next, we have an ordinance. Your Honor, I have a motion for preliminary adoption of the second reading of an ordinance rezoning the property located at 2740 Mount Pleasant Street, otherwise known as Fairway Center, uh, from C2 General Commercial to M1 Light Industrial Zoning District. Second. Any change? Uh, there have time? been no changes since the first reading. Anyone from the audience wishing to speak to this issue? Leon J. Han, 1821 Mount Pleasant Street. I'm sure you know what my opinion of these projects are, but I'm going to repeat it again. Um, I'll be short sweet this time as long as we continue to subsidize poverty wage employers what, and we, not, are you you're not speaking to the right issue right now this, this is, is part of the same plan this is the ordinance rezoning the property that's okay. what we're talking then, about then i'll talk about it from the other standpoint i'm against it because it's going to increase my taxes directly or indirectly thank you anyone else wishing to speak Council, what's your pleasure? What would you like to do? I'm all for it. I am too. Okay. Do we want to uh, proceed with waiving of this to go to the third? Re yes. Let's I think that. we should. We'll, we'll, we we'll figure that out if you yep. if you make the motion. We'll so, um, I have a motion to amend uh, to amend the preliminary the motion for preliminary adoption of the second reading of the ordinance rezoning property located at 2740 Mount Pleasant Street, Fairway Center. From C2 General Commercial to M1 Light Industrial Zoning District to read as follows. For waiver of preliminary consideration of adoption of the second reading and for final adoption of an ordinance rezoning the property located at 2740 Mount Pleasant Street, Fairway Center, from C2 General Commercial to M1 Light Industrial Zoning District. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, we have an amendment. <coughs> We need a vote on the amendment first, Kathleen. Yes. Reed? Aye. Anderson? Aye. Davidson? Aye. Fleming? Aye. McCampbell? Aye. We have a motion amended on the floor. Any discussion? Nope. Nope. Okay, Kathleen. Reed? Aye. Anderson? Aye. Davidson? Aye. Fleming? Aye. McCampbell? Aye. And the motion as amended is passed. <coughs> we have a resolution to take up now, Mr. Fleming. Resolution of the City of Burlington, Iowa, authorizing the City Council to execute applications and agreements related to state and local programs to assist Weingart Company in the expansion of its Burlington, Iowa plant. Do we have a second? Second, Dan. Thank you. Uh, Dan, do we have anything to be said about that 
Um, or, I'll or explain as best I can. Here. I'm sure if they have questions that uh, Jason from the chamber okay. is here to answer those. But it's basically uh, going into an agreement. Um, it's a TIF area that uh, that we've allowed a, a TIF agreement in this uh, resolution here, and the money used from that TIF will be used for the city's match for a jobs a jobs bill that they want to execute. Also, it's uh, it's the same thing we you've done in the past with Case and uh, uh, Champion or Federal Mogul, mm -hmm. also. So b basically, it's it's a little different than what you've seen in the past. This one al um, allows for no upfront money by the city, um, and really no risk to the city at that point for that. It's it's based on the increment finance or the taxing as it goes on, mm -hmm. and I believe you've read it, it's the first five years is 75 percent, the second five years at 50 percent. It's kind of it in a nutshell. And are there any more elaborate questions than that? I guess I'll have to defer to Jason. Okay. Um, are there any questions, comments from the audience? Maybe we should go there first. Here at Renteria, 907 High Street. Um, just, a, just a couple thoughts on this one. First, that, um, I think it's a great project. Um, where my concern comes in is in the lack of a limit to the city's exposure in terms of the tax rebate that's being made available through the program. Um, it's been suggested uh, by Mr. Hutchinson that the cost, additional cost in taxes um, on this project would be somewhere in the neighborhood of $100,000. Um, in light of that, um, you know, I guess what I would, uh, I, have, I have not seen in, in the paperwork um, uh, for this meeting anywhere that suggests what the actual dollar figure uh, may be. And so, um, while it's represented that this cost is going to be roughly uh, $75,000 a year to the city, um, what I would suggest is that, is that the city take some type of a stopgap measure to limit the amount of tax dollars that go into the project. Because the perception that's created amongst the public today is that this is about a uh, $75,000 five-year risk and then in the subsequent five years, about $50,000. And I'm concerned that the, the actual dollars of this project over that 10-year life will be uh, significantly greater than that. Okay. Thank you. Um, and can I speak to that, too, a little bit, Eric? Um, sure. It is not um, a set dollar amount. It's a percentage, 75% the the rebate and then we get 25% so if that dollar amount goes up our 25% goes up I, I understand and that. so um, you know I guess whatever amount it's worth if it goes up it's it's a, a larger amount to the city too um, I like I really like it and think that it was um, you know a great idea to do it as a rebate because they could have asked for money up front um, and I have some other questions of Jason, I guess, too. When, when uh, and, and I and I th I think the the structure of it is is outstanding. I, I thought it was a very creative solution. Um, where my concern came in is that when I um, if you look at if you look at eighty three thousand dollars of taxes on a one point five million dollar property, you are looking at about a five point five percent effective rate for taxation. Now, if you run those same numbers on the projected input on this project, which goes up to around $15 million. Um, it's a multiple of 10. Uh, a tax rate of 5.5% turns out to be about $830,000 a year. The question that I think I'm really putting before council is whether or not it, it is in the, in the fiscal best interest of the citizens to put millions of dollars into Fairway Center um, on behalf of a private citizen as opposed to hundreds of thousands. And so it's really a matter of, of scale and degree and understanding and representing to the people of Burlington an accurate depiction of what this tax rebate is. Because even in the paper today, um, it suggested that the um, increase in value of the property, even though I think they were, uh, they said it wrong, the increase in value of the property was $100,000. Well, the increase in value of that property is going to be in the scale of millions, not $100,000. And so I think it, it is important that the people of Burlington understand 
what their contribution to this project is. And more fundamental to that is that, is that the, the city needs to be working with the state to lower tax rates for everybody because um, multi-million dollar tax rebates are available to the very few, um, not, to the, not to the many. And so while this is a great project, um, you know, it, it is important that, that the, city, the citizens of Burlington understand that they're going to be contributing millions of dollars to this project, um, not $100,000. And, and that's, a, that's a big difference. Well, there's, there's a couple of things that I'd like to mention. First of all, you use the term cost, and it's not really a cost. It's actually going to be an increase in tax revenues to the Burlington. It's not going to be a cost to Burlington. This, and secondly, the monies that are, the tax revenues are coming from Weingard Company. They're not coming from the citizens of Burlington. This is the Weingard Company's projects. They're the ones that are going to be paying the taxes, and they're the ones that are going to get the rebate from the taxes that they paid in, not the citizens of Burlington. No, I understand that. And, and well, I, I don't think people from the audience would have understood that based on what no, your comments were. Yeah. Well, the, the, what, what also needs to be understood along with that is that every community has a certain amount of commercial and industrial taxes that offset taxes for the people who live in that community. When a business operates in that community, uh, you take example West Burlington with all the commercial development that's, that's occurred there compared to the number of, of residential properties, their tax base is substantially lower than that of Burlington. And so by, by giving a tax rebate to our commercial and industrial um, partners, um, it does cause a private citizens' residential tax rates to be higher. So it's a complicated issue. I, I don't, I don't yeah. agree with you there. I don't either. I think you're, mis you're missing the, you're misconstruing. Yeah. Well, I don't think I am. Well, but there's, but, an, but there's, okay. another, there's another point that's misconstrued too, that you used the number, the 5.5% or whatever, and then you took that number, but you have to remember we're talking about the incremental so that the $83,000 baseline, you have to subtract that out of there before you even begin to calculate what the rebate might be. All right, when you take the, when you take the effective rate um, of $83,000 on a $1.5 million property and extrapolate it, excluding the $83,000, it works out to almost $4 million over the life of the project. So my numbers aren't aren't astray. Well, that's not the numbers that I got. It, it, that's way it. too high. That's way too high. And, I, and actually, I would, I would have assumed that it is higher, and I, I redid those numbers at a $5 million, a $10 million, and a $15 million uh, level to try to get a basis for what those taxes are going to be. But I guess my point is that it's not, it's not $100,000. It, it, it's substantially the so contribution Eric, on the part of the city. I have a question is, for you. If we don't yeah. approve this and they don't go through in this project falls because of this and then there's uh, 71 jobs that aren't created for the community that are averaging out about 16 29 per hour where does that look negative on and who does that fall upon um, as I said in the beginning I'm not opposed to the project but I just think it's real important that the citizens of Burlington understand what their contribution to the project is and so really that's my point is that um. is that I think it's important that um, that that the council take the, the time to assess what the impact is and understand, which I, I know you do, I'm speaking <coughs> to the choir here, but um, understand that the, the, fi the complete fiscal benefits to the citizens of Burlington are what we're, what we're talking about. Exactly, here. which yeah. makes this an outstanding project. Mm -hmm. I, I, I yeah. agree. And, uh, and Eric, um, in my profession, I, part of my time I have to analyze pri publicly traded companies. This is a privately held company. But when companies look to locate, they look for low utilities, they look for incentives from, I mean, ABC Company, don't, don't call it Weingart, I mean, ABC Company comes to Burlington and they want, they want the, the city to show some support. This particular project, the way it <coughs> is set up, we don't have to put any money up front. Our citizens aren't, I think you're confusing the citizens by some of your statements. Our citizens, are not costing anything. This is not costing them anything. West Burlington does have a cheaper rate. They use a lot of TIF financing, more than we do. They're hilarious. So yeah. I feel like this is kind of going the other way. This is going to add additional money to um, 
what we will have available. And so I want to make that clear to people. And I think it, the communities it's, like West Burlington, if the state of Iowa continues to look at the commercial tax rebate, West Burlington is going to suffer because they have a higher commercial rate. And so then their property taxes have to go up on the personal side. Right. And I, and I think you're making my point that when the when the commercial taxes um, imp impact the residential tax rates, the residential tax, rate, tax rates are lower. And so, you know, the, um, the, what, what, what the city is losing is a, a potential several million dollars worth of tax revenue that could be used to offset residential property taxes. How do we but lose what we no don't way. have? No way. Yeah. In, we we, we mean, don't have that. We, you know, do we want... I, you know, I don't know. I, I would have this question. I don't know if Jason knows it, but I know that um, I noticed that Weingart came up with a new product about a year and a half ago, and I thought they were looking at manufacturing that in China. And when I heard that they were going to do this plant here, I was very proud of the fact that somebody from our city or a company in our city would put jobs in Burlington and, and not take it to China. And I, it, maybe, they ha maybe they're doing some in China too, but I was very glad to hear that they were doing this. Um, I agree. I, 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 like I said in the beginning, I think it's a good project, but I, I just think it's important that, we, that we, the citizens of Burlington understand the, the actual contribution that they're, being, that they're going to be asked to be made to this project. And over the but life of that 10 not, years... Eric, they're not. You're misleading people here. I, I don't think that... Well, we can agree to disagree. Um, that's, if you, that's if you, fine. If you that's tax fine. that property without the rebate over the full 10 years versus the rebate, those tax dollars are being contributed back to Wine Garden Company. Absolutely, but why not? I, um, well, it's not a matter of why or why not. It's a matter of of the way that it's uh, presented and making sure that everyone understands what we are contributing okay. to that process. That, that's fine. I appreciate it. Thank you for your comments. You bet. Uh, I did some calculating, and Jason, you can tell me if I'm correct or not, but it, assuming this is, comes back at a $5 million assessment, it all depends. The reason it's a moving number is because we don't know what it's going to end up being assessed yes. right. by the county assessor. If it's a $5 million assessment, it would be rebated roughly $95,000 back to uh, Wine Guard Company in the TIF. That's my calculations, assuming that the tax rate is still $42 in, in Des Moines County. Uh, Jason, do you have anything you want to add on this to clarify for us here? Sure. Well, this uh, it, it could go uh, uh, a number of areas, but um, I know sorry, I spoke to oh, Jason yourself. Hutchison with the Greater Burlington Partnership, Thank and you. with me tonight is uh, Dennis Hinkle with the partnership and, uh, and Ed Spicer from uh, Wine Guard. And uh, I'll just uh, maybe reiterate some of the comments I made uh, last week and then uh, get into some specific issues. But this project is, is absolutely economic development. And uh, this is the exact type of project that communities all over the Midwest, uh, particularly our size in, in, uh, in the rural mi Midwest, would, uh, uh, would aggressively pursue. Uh, and uh, because uh, uh, it's a, a local company, uh, sometimes we could take those things for granted. And, and I want to be sure that, that, that the folks in, in this community uh, don't do that. A couple of things uh, worth uh, noting, I think, is that this is it's, uh, it's a redevelopment project. So it is taking an area that today ha uh, has vacancy and is underutilized and, and rehabilitating the, the entire area. It is about job creation. 70, uh, 71 jobs are, are estimated and, uh, and about $15 million in, in capital investment. And it's also what we call a primary sector company, which means it's importing dollars into the community. So exporting a product and importing dollars. And I think that's very important because uh, those are the types of projects that increase the wealth with, within a community. So the, uh, the requests before you tonight are to approve a resolution and support because the state is not going to uh, fund a project that does not have support of, of the local community. And then, and then second is the city's contribution into the project. And and 
those two things then authorize the mayor to, to sign uh, agreements. With re respect to, uh, to the value of this, and that's why I always hesitate to throw out uh, numbers because uh, they, they stick and uh, it, was, it was intended to be used for discussion. So I, I think the context of my remarks were, you know, could the value increase uh, and, the, and the net increase in taxes be 100,000 a year? I certainly think so. Could they be more? Well, I think we all would hope that they would be. And um, uh, just a, 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 another uh, thought, the way that this is structured in terms of the TIF rebate and based upon a percentage, is it does not discourage a cap could discourage investment right because all right if i'm capped at that i might you know tend to limit the investment in a project it also represents new incremental dollars to the community on day one of taxable value for that for that property so as soon as the increase in value comes on the books uh, new dollars come to the city. Sure, a portion of that will then be rebated to the company. Then on day one, new tax revenue is used for the city um, for, for other projects. So uh, that was kind of a, a walkthrough, and uh, you know, I'd be happy to take, take questions. The, the only thing that I'm really wrestling with, and at first I did think that it was quite a commitment of money that we were spending. I'm, I'm not a businessman, so I didn't realize what it does take to, to get business, and uh, it takes incentive. Um, that's common sense. Uh, I'm all down for development. My only issue with this deal, my biggest issue, after everything is said and done, because I still think it is a good deal ultimately, is you're not doing a new, a new development. You're doing a redevelopment. And I just think that there needs to be a commitment from the city or, you know, from the chamber that with these old businesses, even though this is going to bring in all this new business, I just don't think that that's, that's progress and that's doing any good if we can't keep all of those old businesses, uh, if, we don't, if we don't have a place for them to, to go. So uh, I'm just curious about that and, and what's going to happen with, with these old businesses because I'm really not for... Uh, any type of development that's going to close down a old business. I just don't think that's a good way to do business. That's just me. But outside of that, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm for the development. I think, it's, uh, I think it is ultimately a good deal. But I want somebody to tell me, where's the commitment with these, with these other businesses? <clears throat> uh, well, that's, that's a great question if you're, if you're asking me to respond. And, and certainly I, I would... Uh, I would agree with you as, uh, as the Greater Burlington Partnership for Business Association, and, and we certainly uh, hope that, that every business that, that uh, might be impacted by this uh, and, and may have to uh, relocate would have a successful transition. Uh, projects such as these, any, any time a type of a, a landlord-tenant uh, arrangement has, has a contract, and, and those contracts expire, and, and perhaps they can be renegotiated. So by this deal moving forward, that doesn't automatically give the new buyers of the area the right to, to, to throw folks out because there are existing lease agreements. So a negotiation must take place between the new buyer and the current tenants on, on either uh, fulfilling that existing contract or, or coming to some mutual arrangement uh, uh, for, for that to end. And, you know, certainly if we can be of assistance in working with companies, uh, we also have a, a, a vibrant uh, real estate brokerage community uh, uh, here in, in Greater Burlington, and we certainly want to see a successful transition as well. Okay, thank you, Jason. All right. Do we have other comments from the audience? Answer your question, Shane. Jeff Davis, 1826 Osborne. I've, <clears throat> when, when I first heard about the project, I went out to Fairway and, and talked to everyone that's out there. Uh, then I went and did research, and we've got enough room for everybody yes. um, to move. So, you know, I myself thinking of this, you know, why didn't Wine Guard, and this may be a, a good a question that um, uh, you can answer for me. The shell building, why didn't, uh, what was wrong? Jeff, the, I need to. Sorry. What was wrong with the shell building? Um, was it just not a good fit for him? Because it is in M1 zoning already, and we're taking commercial space that we're not ever going to get back. And, you know, it. I was just wondering why that shell building didn't fit. But to answer your question, the former Walmart, I walk that off and we can get four more 7,000 square foot spots in there or 
uh, that property can be taken by a, a Joanne fabric. Uh, we've got uh, the uh, where the Hobby Lobby is. We've got about forty thousand square in there, thirty thousand square in there available. I've got the Blockbuster listed, and we've got five thousand there. I've got the old Liquor Depot listed. We've got seventy five hundred there, so we've got spaces for them, and um, uh, it's it's going to be easy for them uh, to to do a transition. So it's going to be a it's a great move for, I think, Weingart. But my only question was, why didn't the M1, already M1 zone vacant shell building work? Because I could just see that as a beautiful building for Weingart. Okay, thank, thank you, thank Jeff. You. Any other comments from the audience? Um, I'm sorry, Eric, we have two others that haven't yeah. spoken yet. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Leon Shahan, 1821 Mount Pleasant Street. I'm opposed to these projects, and, and I think... Uh, there's a lot of misinformation out there. I just heard a number that we are supposedly creating jobs that pay sixteen twenty nine an hour. The last ad I saw for wine guard positions was eight and a half dollars an hour. Folks, that's below the poverty wage. I'm going to say it again. As long as we continue to subsidize poverty wage employers, life isn't going to get better in Burlington. In actuality, the agreement for the targeted jobs is the guarantee, I believe it's 17 jobs are going to be above the average, which is 1629. Is that correct, Jason? Yeah, just for clarification, the county average wage today is 1629 an hour. Yeah, um, right. Of the 71 jobs projected to be created, 16 of that will be above the county average. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Steve? Thank you, Jason. I could time up. I'm not going to be a regular, but I do want to support this project. I'm glad that uh, Mr. Wangard chose to invest in our city. I'm actually glad he picked the site that he did because this is going to be a catalyst for new growth in other areas. Matter of fact, uh, I'd like to compliment the creative thinking that I'm seeing tonight because there's a lot more that can come from this. I agree. I'd like to see the city become very involved with maybe the same kind of tax incentives for all these people who have to relocate. And I'd love to see it in our downtown. And I think the city has opportunities here to take this opportunity further into uh, helping these people relocate. So uh, my compliments for the creative thinking and thank you for supporting it. Thank, thank you, you, Steve. Anyone else? Eric? Sure, Renteria, 907 High Street. Just uh, one other thought on this was, um, as I looked at this project uh, in total, one of the things that occurred to me is that it was there is an opportunity to kill two birds with one stone, and that is that the Fairway um, Center pro uh, uh, businesses that are there now are going to need a place to go to. And what would be the chances that Weingard could acquire the property that the city has for sale on, on uh, Roosevelt and move those businesses from the Fairway Center property over to the uh, property on Highway 61, the old manor property, and develop that, and then that would then shift over to the to the tax rolls as well. So um, while I understand, uh, I'm, I'm not a real estate guy, but I understand that there, there are properties available at the same time, uh, what a fantastic opportunity to move a block of businesses into a property that is in desperate need of, of development. So just some Thank, food you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from the audience wishing to speak on this issue? Seeing none, Council, what comments do we have? Let's move ahead. Okay. Good. <laughs> well, I, I do want to say something about what Eric said, too. Um, I think we have too many empty places where retail needs to go, and I think this will, you know, help that uh, to... to to have less, to, to, not, to no longer have Fairway Center and those places have to relocate, that will help other um, owners of, of property that are looking for tenants. And so I do see what you say about, you know, having Weingard develop something, but I think that it, we have a better chance of having an outside developer looking at the mm -hmm. Highway 61 site now when we have less commercial uh, options and this will this will lower the number of options we have so it it would be like killing um, you know two birds with one stone if it makes that more desirable 
and that we now need more uh, retail space. Okay. Okay. Anything else, Council? We no. satisfied here? Okay, we have a motion and a second. Um, Kathleen? Reed? Aye. Anderson? Aye. Davidson? Aye. Fleming? Aye. McCampbell? Aye. Now is the time. Thank you. The motion is carried. Uh, with time for comments from the audience. Yeah. Stan, you're up. This is a discussion on anything, right? Yes, sir. I have a question. I attended the work session uh, last period. And I understood you to say that we're going to borrow a million dollars for the dog pond and they're going to pay us back. Is that correct? I don't think anybody said that. Mm -hmm. That's what I well, that's what I thought I heard. That's why I thought, man. No, that no. No. Uh, okay, well, that's good. I was going to say, why in the world would we ever do that? No. No. Okay. I don't. I don't know. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, I I get now what. The animal shelter was the, the animal shelter is on the capital improvements project. And it was listed for a million dollars, yes. But that doesn't mean we're going to borrow a million dollars to do it. Because I thought no. you said the, the council understands we're going to borrow a million dollars. No, 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 no. Okay. no. Anyone else? Thank you, Stan, by the way. Wait, Eric. I, I have something briefly. I just want to reiterate our comprehensive plan um, oh, good. update. We did have a public meeting uh, last Thursday at the library, very well attended. Uh, I want to thank everyone that was able to make that. Also wanted to uh, um, reiterate, uh, we do have an online survey at our comprehensive plan website, www.burlingtoncompplan.com. That's available through the end of the month, so we encourage everyone in the community to fill that out, because um, at the end of the month, it will no longer be there. Um, you can, uh, again, visit that at the website. There is a link from the city's website, or if you don't have internet access, you can pick up a hard copy at the development department office on the first floor. Um, or call our office and we can mail one out to you. So I encourage everyone to go to that site and fill out the survey. You can also follow um, the meetings and the progress on that website. Uh, we do have our third uh, conference of plan committee meeting this Thursday at 7.15 a.m. here in the council chambers. So it's open to the public, but I really encourage everyone to get involved in this conference of plan update and uh, fill out the survey if, you, if you're able to do that as well. Okay. Thank you, Rick. Mr. Lutnick, do you have any updates or comments? Just real quick, um, a couple of them you've already seen the uh, asphalt, the retention monies were, were all taken care of. The riprap project is on hold. It's about 65% completed <laughs> oh. because they're waiting on the completion of the boat docks, which are 50% completed, to get that whole project <laughs> okay. uh, underway. Weather's not real conducive for no. continuing on that, but uh, <laughs> when the weather does break, those should be completed. Still waiting on that for a while. Yes. A little while. Well, <laughs> yeah. Unless we have a spring flood. And one thing after another. No, we're not going to have one. Okay. No, there's not enough snow. There's not enough snow to have a flood. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. We'll get it. That's where we're at. Okay. Council, do you have any comments? I do not have anything. I do not. No. I have one, just to give you all a heads up. I was at the emergency management meeting last week. Uh, we are under obligation from the federal government to have a training session on emergency management, which fortunately uh, the assistant fire chief, deputy fire chief, is, uh, yes. Gene Wilkerson is one of the certified trainers. So I've talked to him and um, probably March, April sometime, we'll have to do a work session and he'll come in and train us about emergency management procedures. Okay. Good. That's um, interesting. Roughly an hour and a half or so. So it's the incident command system oh. that needs to be in effect anytime there's a disaster, and city council will be a big part of that. Yeah, it's good training. And uh, do we have an underground bunker? <laughs> 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 you can develop one, Becky. <laughs> uh, city manager search. We had um, 65 applicants, which two of them have dropped because they've gotten employment somewhere else. Um, so that's heading down the road. And remember, um, the 30th, we're going to meet to narrow our list down. Okay. Any other comments? I have a motion for adjournment. I move that we adjourn. Second that. Kathleen? Reed? Aye. Anderson? Aye. Davidson? Aye. Fleming? Aye. McCampbell? Aye. We are adjourned. God bless you and God bless Burlington.
Thank you. 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 Thank you.